Hello, good evening. Well, it's uh, evening here in Luxembourg. Uh, today I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about the browser function and I want to talk about another pipe operator. So in the last video, I talked about the pipe operator, and but there's different ones. There's another one which I want to talk about, which is only interesting whenever you are uh, interested in the um, side effects of the functions, of the functions that you want to use. So a side effect, you, you, I'll, I'll show some examples, but a side, a side effect is something that happens when a function changes something outside its scope. So for example, the write.csv function, which writes a data frame into, onto your disk, uh, well, that function has a side effect, which is the fact of writing to your disk. So it's, it's a function that changes something outside of its scope. So... Uh, you'll see how this fits with the browser function, which is a function that is very useful whenever you want to uh, browse through your code and debug it, or just to make sense of a loop, for example. It allows you to go step by step and to really understand what is going on in a loop. So I prepared here a little example. So let's imagine that I have a vector of numbers from 1 to 100. And let's suppose that I want first, you know, let's take a look at the cumsum function. So this computes the cumu cumulative, I guess, cumulative sum of that vector. Uh, but imagine that I want to write a loop that does the same thing, right? So what I do is that first I will create a result vector which only contains zeros. And I can as well say that the first element first element of result is the first element of numbers and now I can write my loop and I can start from the index number two so my loop for i in length in one to length of numbers numbers what do I do I say that result i is equal to result i minus 1 plus numbers i and i made a little mistake it's not doesn't start from 1 as i said it starts from 2. so uh, let's run this and let's take a look result okay it's as you can see the same thing as the comsum function that's great but now imagine that I want to understand what is going on step by step. So of course you could uh, you could put a print statement in there, but it would really pollute your um, your console. You would see, well, this is a, a small loop that only goes to 100, but if it's a loop that goes to 10,000, you would have 10,000 uh, print statements there and you wouldn't understand anything. So a simple, simple way, up. sorry. There we are. A simple way to make sense of it is to use the browse function. So browse up, sorry, browser function. So let's rerun it and let's actually rerun it from here. Great. So now what happened? As you see, my prompt changed. It's not the standard prompt anymore. Now I have uh, the browse word in my prompt. What happens here? If I type, uh, let's say that I typed i, well, i is at 3, okay? So this means that i started at 2, something happened, so result of 2 was computed, and then the loop started again, and now uh, I am at 3, and browser the browser function was called. So if I take a look at result, I can see that I already have the first three elements. So the first one, of course, I had it because uh, I manually said that the first element of result was the first element of numbers, but I now am at the step where I already have result of two and result of three. So let's suppose that now I uh, want to continue. So there's a special command. So in this special prompt, there's a special command which is called n, n for next. So I type n, I execute it. Now, result has, has been computed again. So, but let's type n again. Now I am again at the browser function. So if I take a look at i, I'm at step four. And if I take a look at result, 
now I have my fourth element that was computed. So as you can see, this is, this is really useful if you have a very complex function or a very complex loop and you don't really understand what is going on at some point, you get weird results or you get a bug. So you just type in this browser function, the execution will stop at that line and you can browse your function. You can browse the um, elements that, that, or the objects that only exist within this loop or within the function. And you can also then uh, take a look at every variable that was created in the body of that function or of that, or of that loop. So if I want to quit this, I just type capital Q and I execute it. Great. Now let's take a look at another use case. What happens if I write a function and that function um, gives me an unexpected result, right? So let's take a look at it. So let's write a stupid function that takes as an argument a data set and a column, right? And let's say that this stupid function first does some manipulations in this data set, so uh, it creates a new column, for example, that is, mm, let's go with first, yeah, the square root of a column. Okay, so if, you, if you're not familiar with uh, this uh, braces braces syntax, I wrote a blog post that explains that and I'll link it in the description. But basically it allows you to pass the name of a column as an argument of a function. Very, uh, It's not super complicated uh, once you get used to it and uh, I hope that my blog post will help you understand. But if you have any questions, let me know. In the comments. So let's now say that uh, I take, uh, first of all, I pull this new column. So pull, I talked a little bit about it in my previous video, but the idea again is very simple. It's just you pull out the column out of the data frame and you can continue working with it. It basically becomes a vector and you can work with it. And now let's say that I take the log. So as I said, it's a very stupid function. And now I take the sum. Great. Let's execute this and let's say that I want to execute this on uh, empty cars and on the MPG column. So I take my stupid function, stupid function, uh, empty cars, MPG, and I get a beautiful result of 47.32. Great, I'm happy, I save it, I uh, turn off my computer, I go home and the next day I'm back at work. And I want to run my stupid function on another data set, on another data set called GSS Cat. So that's a data set that comes with the uh, Tidyverse package, or more specifically, uh, with the Forecats package, which is a package that allows you to work with factor variables. So this uh, data set contains some information, some socioeconomic and sociodemographic data on people. And there's a very interesting variable, which is the amount of hours that people watch per day. So let's say that I'm interested into using my function on this TV hours variable. And now I get an NA. Uh, why do I get an NA? Well, if I inspect the data a little bit, I'll know why. But I let's say that it's not so easy, right? Let's say that uh, my data set is very big or, you know, that there's some very specific things that happen in my uh, stupid function function. And it's not very easy to just take a look at the data and understand immediately. Well, let's use the browser function, right? However, there's a little problem here. If I put the browser function here in this line, on this line, what will happen is that the... So data set pull new call and then the log of this new column will be passed as an argument to the browser function. However, that's not how it's supposed to work because uh, the browser function does not take this vector as an input, right? The browser function what, the browser function has only a side effect, which is transforming your prompt into this browser prompt that allows you to look within the function. So you don't want to use that, or, or rather you don't want to pass something as an input of the browser function, you just want to call it at that point. And this is where the new pipe operator, or, or rather this pipe operator that I want to talk about, this one here, is very useful. Because this pipe operator, 
will only call the next line, so in this case the browser function, for its side effect. So for instance, imagine that instead of browser I use the uh, plot function. So plot as well is a function that uh, you call for, for its side effect and, we, and the side effect of plot is to show you a plot, right? So it changes something outside of, your, uh, of, of its body, it shows something on your screen. So if I run this on empty cars MPG, what happens is that I see a plot and I still see my result. So what happens here is that this line, this plot line, the input is basically skipped and passed to sum immediately. However, plot is still called. And that's exactly what you would need to do if you want to use the browser function. You want just to browse, you, you just want browser to be called, and you, you, know, you want the input or this vector to be passed to some, right? So if I run this, and if I run it on my GSS cat, well, what happens here? Um, well, I run it on MPG, I think. Yeah, I, I think I run it on MPG. Uh, wait, let me comment this. And that's going to, that should work. Okay, great. So now I am inside my function. Let's take a look at GSS cat, right? Or rather, not GSS cat, let's take a look, a look at dataset. So dataset exists within the scope of my function. It doesn't exist in my global environment, but it exists within the scope of my function. So I can take a look at it. And what do I have? So I have the data, the GSS cat dataset plus my new column that I created. And I see that there are some NAs, and this is where the problem comes from, because I have some NAs in my vector, so when I sum them, I get an NA result. So, in this case, it was quite fast, so I can get out of my debugger, I can go back to here, I can remove this, this line, I can remove this, and I can say, well, let's also filter out what is NA from new call. And now, Oh, I still get a minus infinity. How come? Well, that's another. I actually don't know, but you know, let's take, let's use browser again. What did I forget? I must have forgotten something. So let's take a look at data sets. Well, I only have, that is interesting. I only have, okay, let's take a look at maybe any is dot na and now data set new call. Uh, well, I have no, no NA, so why doesn't it work? Interesting, so let's remove this again. Did I run it? So I... Ta, 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 ta. Well, yeah, it should be working. That is very, very, very weird. I have no idea what's going on. Um, okay. Anyway, I, I showed you what I wanted you... To, I showed you what I wanted. However, I'm still really puzzled by this. Uh, I'm really, really, really puzzled by this. Because if I take a look, let's take a look at data set again, new call, up, oh, forgot, uh, oh, typo, okay, great, now if I take this, oh, I guess, yeah, okay, I guess it's because I take the log of zeros and I get, uh, obviously I get minus infinity. You see, again, browser was quite useful here, so um, it's a very useful function. I really, really recommend you use it because it allows you, especially if it's, you know, you're writing a big function with where you're manipulating some very complex uh, objects. It's really, really helpful. And uh, just don't, you know, just don't use print statements. I know we, we all do that, but let's try not to do it. And browser really helps. Uh, it's super useful.
Um, if you use it within our studio, you'll see that your uh, interface will change a little bit, a new pane will come up. Uh, so you have some shortcuts buttons there where you, if you forget the N command, for example, you can you can use it to, I mean, you can click on the buttons to to, to use N or to quit debugger, etc. So it's a bit more user-friendly. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Bye.